Welcome to another Isle Guide. I'm Mr. D-Bear and today we're talking about combat. Now before we get into this next example, I just want to go over a few quick things. Now you're going to see me playing as and against quite a few different types of dinosaurs in this video. Just know that this is not a matchup guide video. This is just a general techniques guide and those are the dinosaurs that I happen to be playing. Now I will mention a few specific matchup things every now and again just because I'm playing those dinosaurs. But this is more of a guide to show you the techniques that you can apply anywhere depending on the situation. So <laughs> if you're going to be getting into combat in the aisle, the next thing I'm about to show you is something you need to keep in the back of your mind because the aisle is a very laggy game sometimes and lag will kill you as we're going to watch here. Now I was in this fight with this trike, I started dancing around with him, and then it got really, really desynky, really, really fast. And you can see on my screen on the left, I kind of just run through and I die right behind him. Now here, we're about to slow it down, and I tried to line it up as best as I could, but what you need to notice is the entry point. I go in on my screen through his right hip, and on his screen, I kind of run straight through his face. So that kind of thing can happen in the aisle. It gets desinky. There's lag that is going to happen to you. So with that in mind, and you're trying to get better at combat, you're just going to have to take one on the chin every now and again, because lag's going to happen and you're going to die from it. So, whoa, I almost forgot. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content coming down the pipeline. My plan is to get specific matchup guides out with numbers, all kinds of stuff. And don't forget to stop by the stream Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday to watch us playing the aisle live and ask all the questions you want, even though I'm garbage. Ah. So next thing is a lot of the footage just after this is going to be on deathmatch servers. Now, I highly encourage you to get better at combat to go to these deathmatch servers and practice bring a friend with you make friends in the server doesn't matter go in and practice specific matchups see how they interact with each other see what you can do see what you can get away with and now on to the tips and the tricks so one of the biggest things you want to avoid is running tail to head so it's very important to try and angle yourself from the sides to try and get bites and keep out of the heads hitbox running from tail to head is a death sentence. You never run tail to head. If your opponent has their ambush up, you need to also have your ambush up. If you get caught with your ambush down and your opponent has it before you have yours, you are going to get bitten. But that is one of the golden rules. So this technique that the Suko does here is called a break check. Basically, I'm chasing him. He is going to stop I'm going to run through him because I don't realize that he's stopping and he's going to bite and kill me. But you don't want to do this on every matchup, right? Obviously, a Suko is not going to try and break check a Rex. A Dilo is not going to try and break check an Allo. Now, as a Dilo, I will break check a Raptor to try and get a bite off. So here I break check the Raptor. I get the initial bite. I run a little bit and then I break check him again. I get a second bite. And a third. I th think maybe a fourth. I'm not sure. But then we run. We're swinging our tail away from his face. We're juking him out until we can run him out and bleed him out. So that is one more effective use of the, the break check technique. So here we're going to show uh, the Z walking technique that the Carno is using, right? So Carnos have very bad turn radius so what he's doing is he's toggling his z walk so then when he stops sprinting he's normal walking so he can then turn quicker and then start his sprint again so he can line up bites on me and keep me off of his tail and he does kill me here with this pretty easily honestly so obviously the last example was on a no alt turn server so what happens on an alt turn server you might wonder so yes, the alt turn is faster than the Z walk for turning around. 
The thing you need to watch out for though is the momentum of when you are stopping. Your momentum, forward momentum, must stop before you can alt turn. If it doesn't, you'll continue to just walk. So I'm gonna fail this a couple times. I'm gonna try to alt turn while the forward momentum is going. I tried to alt to the alt turn to the right. The momentum didn't stop, so I just kept walking. Now we'll let the momentum stop. And you can kind of see it with that animation of the legs locking down. Boom, he stands up straight. I can alt turn. So we're just going to try and show a little bit of how Z walking can help you ride. So, as you can see, if I normal walk, I'll out trot the Rex, right? And then I'll probably walk into his bite range. But if I'm Z walking and toggling between it, I can control my speed a little bit better. And it gives you a few more options. Now this is really only applicable on non alt turn servers. So please don't play Giga and try to go ass ride a Rex on an alt turn server because it's not gonna probably go good for you. But depending on the situation on alt turn servers, like the official servers, you can use that Z walk, that Z walk ass riding technique in, in a fight. It just kind of depends on the situation. So now we're going to use one of the VODs from the stream. We'll be giving tips and tricks from the Dylos point of view and from the Rex's point of view as if you were playing as the Rex. So first off, the Rex is making a mistake by fighting us in this open area. It's daylight, he can still see. So he should probably find a better place for him to fight. So up against a cliff face or a deep water source where we would have to swim through possibly and slow us down so that he cuts off a lot of the angles that he can be approached from, which makes the fight way, way harder for us and way more manageable for him. Now we're going to show an example of one of the most important things in team fighting is baiting. I'm going to go in for a bait and you see euphoric contact on the right there. After I get the Rex's attention and he comes towards me and faces towards me, euphoric is going to go in for a bite. The Rex faces me, euphoric goes in for a bite, lands the bite, clean. Baiting is one of the most important things to get used to in a fight. and the better your group can pace baiting, the better the fight will go for you. If no one's baiting, then no real work is getting done. So here's a really important thing to get used to. So we have, I see you is going to go in for a bait in front of the Rex. Then you fork contact and I are going to try and go in for a bite, but I see him also trying to go in. So I veer away so that I do not accidentally bite him. Because if one of us bites each other, it puts us out of the fight almost immediately for a solid minute and a half to two minutes while we heal off one another's bleed. So it's very important to have some situational awareness as to what your teammates are doing because it really, really puts a damper on the fight if you guys fight each other. And also from the Rex's point of view, if he was fighting with a group of Rexes, you really, really do not want to be fighting your teammates in that situation because if the Rex bites his teammate he can leg break them or potentially if he has a sub Rex with him in his party he could kill the sub Rex very very easily so friendly fire is something you really really want to pay attention to and watch out for in in team fighting situations so here's a nice example of just a good clean bite. I go in to a back angle and I leave at a back angle while he's facing away from me and gives me the opportunity I'm in, I'm out. So here's a nice little example of a decent engage. I go in and kind of bait the Rex, and then Red, as soon as he starts moving, he swoops in, gets a bite on. Easy. Now, unfortunately, Red goes back in here, and he's going to show you an example of the Rex's left hitbox, and it'll, it'll snag you, as you're about to see. Now, there's probably other people that know more about it, so here's a nice little example. Now it looked to me like red was actually nowhere near his mouth, but 
that left hitbox reached out and brought him straight home. So here's another interesting little tactic you use as a bait. Uh, if there's corpses around, you can eat, and oftentimes the adversary will hear that and try to chase you down, which leaves an opening for them to be bitten because they have forward momentum and they're moving. I eat, he starts moving. Jazzy Cats goes in for a nice clean bite and gets out. So here the Rex starts to put himself finally in a better situation by putting his back against the rocks, cutting off the angles that we can get to him. Now right here, he roars. So this is very important because when you are roaring, you cannot bite. So if someone is roaring, that is a free bite on them. So here the Rex is going to try and rest. And when you see someone rest, you need to pressure them immediately to get back up so the bleed will keep doing its work and as soon as he goes down you see everyone just rush in to make him stand back up and get some good bites on now another little note you'll see i see you using the terrain to his advantage right here and falling down off of the rock to get a bite on the rex getting creative like that with your angle of bites is very rewarding so here's a good example of the importance of having your ambush up. So I'm approaching him. I I know he has his up, so I'm getting mine charged. And he hasn't really gone for any ambush attacks this entire fight up until now. But if I hadn't had my ambush here, I would have definitely died. But a tip from the Rex's point of view, he probably should have been using ambush attacks way earlier in the fight when he could see during the daylight because the odds of him catching us with that ambush are actually pretty good if if we make a mistake and linger a little bit too close or a little bit too long now he goes for the rest immediately dive in get him back up on his feet and then finally he kind of walks off and defeat three two one he goes down za good fight team took down the big daddy rex so thank you so much for watching that does it for the combat guide just remember we're coming out with more stuff, matchups, all sorts of stuff to keep you guys informed. Now feel free to join us in the Discord. I'll put the link in the description below and come play the aisle with us anytime. Just uh, watch the language in there, all right? Thanks guys, and I will see you next time. Okay. Oh, I remember this. Little circle. Damn you, Vanilla. Whoa! Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> God.